All right, it is six o'clock. So welcome everyone to Forex for Beginners. Happy Tuesday. And we do this class every week um, just to help everyone get um, acclimated with the charts and to address um, any questions that you're having. Um, we always want to brag and talk about Coach Max and the, the two-week syllabus in the back office. There is so much value back there. Um, there's um, beginner, intermediate, and um, advanced sniper um, entries, binary, so much um, good information in the back office. So we definitely recommend um, you checking out everything that's back there. In addition to all the live classes, and then with us being part of Coach Max and Ryan's downline, we have access to Dynasty Exchange. So there's a whole schedule that of classes that they offer um, during the week. So make sure um, for all active members, Coach Max has sent out an email that has the link to um, those telegrams. So we want to stay plugged in. And then we're here, Impact Over Profit, we're under Damo's downline. And so um, I don't know if y'all been taking note, his US 30 signals have been um, absolute fire um, the last couple of weeks. So I definitely caught some of the US 30 drop today, um, thanks to his signal. So there's uh, a lot of good stuff, a lot of good stuff. I know yesterday, uh, you know, with US 30, just a 0 0.01 is a dollar, pretty much um, a pip or a point, depending on how you look at it. But over, you know, $800, I think, just on the signals, on Domo signals um, yesterday, and about 200 um, today. So um, welcome, everyone. So the format of the class, the way we like to do it, I'll spend about uh, 15 or so minutes going over something new or important, and then we'll open it up for Q&A. We like to keep the class kind of short and sweet, like maybe a half hour, uh, 40 minutes max, uh, just because we have such a full schedule and we want to give you um, back as much time as we can. So with that, I will, oh, before I forget, all of the, all of these classes are recorded and posted on my YouTube. So if you look in the chat, and I will post it again. There is a link to my YouTube. So by tomorrow, um, late morning, um, definitely by lunch, I'll have the, the link posted. So I will share my trading view screen. And so what we've been doing for the past few weeks is showing um, a marked up chart or marking up a chart, so to speak. Let's make sure you can see as much of the chart as possible. And so the purpose of marking up your chart is to, there are lots of advantages. One, if you are at the place where you're taking signals, when you mark up a chart, when you have the ability to mark up a chart, you can actually do your own analysis on that signal and work your way up to determining if it's really a signal that you think you should take. And then, of course, you know, everyone doesn't have the same goals. But for those who want to call your own signal, then this is a great starting point, being able to pull up TradingView. You can have a free account and be able to analyze one to two to three pairs, whichever favorites um, that you that you choose and be, be able to, um, even if, if it's in your demo, be able to practice in um, calling your own trades. So that is the goal. So we've been looking at EU for the past two weeks. And I think last week we had a request for EJ. So I have EJ pulled up here on the chart. And uh, in case you're not familiar, you can have a free account on TradingView. Here in the upper left is where you type in the Forex pair that you're looking for. We are looking at Euro JPY, and then you choose your time frame. So we're going to go to the to the one hour. Anytime you make an hey. adjustment. Yes. I'm sorry. It was um, AJ. Oh, was it AJ? JPY. Yeah. Sure. We'll pull up AJ as well. So Thank for you. yeah, no problem for Trading View right click do a reset chart and it'll get the chart to looking sort of normal so yeah let's take a look at um ej then we'll move over to to aj 
So I'm going to get rid of these zones so that we can kind of start from scratch and we'll come back and mark them up. So EJ, your old JPY is definitely a, a good beginner pair. And if you're not familiar with these colors and I want that to throw you off, you can simply right click, go to settings. And this allows you to customize your chart if you so choose. So for the body of the candles, um, my up candles are in blue, the body and the wick, and my down candles will be in purple. So if you want, you can customize your chart um, the way you like, or leave it in the standard um, green for up or bullish candles and red for down or bearish candles. Okay. And we're going to keep the chart nice and simple. Right now, we have two moving averages on the chart. We have the blue, which is the 50 EMA, and we have the yellow, which is the 200 uh, EMA. So what's really cool, and we've mentioned this before, is this 4XLG EMA setup indicator. If you go to F, that icon, this is where you can add indicators on your chart. So if I was trying to add that one, I would type in 4XLG and there it is. And you just wanna click on that title and that will add the, the indicator to your chart. Now, if you go to settings, notice under style, I have two of the available moving averages selected. Now, if I click on all of these, notice in the background how more are showing up. So I like this indicator because you can have all of these show on your chart with just one indicator. We're gonna keep it nice and simple and only show our 50, our, which is nicknamed the water and the mayo. And you can choose, um, here's where you select which moving average we're gonna see. So here we have the 50. So one, two, three, the fourth one down is the 50. The fifth one down is the 200. We go back to style, one, two, three, four. So we've selected the fourth and the fifth one. So hopefully you guys follow that. That's how you can add the 50 EMA and the 200 EMA to your chart. And you know the, the general rule when the candles, which is price, when price is above the 50, we are looking for buys. And when price is below the 50, we are looking for sales. So the reason that I wanted to start the chart like this before we put our zones on it, I wanted to show you, look how this 200 EMA, and let me just type that on so you can know which is which. So we're gonna do, um, I'll do orange so you can be able to, to read it. So the 200 EMA, we're going to have that in orange. And then the 50 EMA, that's our blue one. Okay, so if you notice, price is kind of moving along in our uptrend, but notice how the 200 EMA is serving as the resistance. It's almost serving as a zone. Price um, was in an uptrend. Let me use my little arrow here. Notice how price is in an uptrend. We're buying price breaks through the 50 EMA and where does it go to? It wicks all the way down to the 200 EMA. So without even having our zones here, if you were on the charts and you notice when price broke through the 50, this is why it's good to study, you know, just a few pair because EJ apparently loves to land on the 200 EMA. So even without your zones being drawn, we can see a trade here when price broke through the 50, came back, touch, touched it again, which we call a retest, and went all the way down to 
the 200 EMA. Price broke through the 50, so now we're in buys. Price came down, and remember, we're on the one hour time frame. So each of these candles is one hour. It takes one hour to get one candle. Price breaks through the 50, where does it go to? Straight to the 200. Okay, price breaks above the 50, falls through, and what does it do? It wicks the 200. So if EJ is one of your pairs that you trade, this will be good to know. Price breaks through the 50, we're looking for buys, we're looking for buys, we're looking for buys. When it falls and goes below the 50, now we're looking for sales. And again, where does price land? It wicks the 50. Let's use an up arrow. Okay, so this is the first time that it, it drops below the 200, but for the most part, any time that you were uh, doing sales, if you wanted to counter trend, because we're clearly in an uptrend, then the 200 would be a great place for your take profit. And this is without even having our zones on the chart. So let's use, I like to use uh, the horizontal line. So over by trend line tools, one, two, three, four, five down, down is the horizontal line. And what we need to do now is add our support and resistance or our zones. So we're going to look for the tops of the candles and we're going to look for the bottoms of the candles and we're going to mark the places that are hit several times. So I'm going to mark this spot. I'm just going to mark a few and then we'll come back and talk about why I selected each one. And we've been saying this um, for a while that, you know, everyone's markup is going to be a little different. There's no uh, perfect way to, to mark up a chart. Everyone's chart um, will have its zones marked just slightly different. Maybe we'll choose this area here. And I see a question in the chat. Yes, we are going to talk about um, why I'm choosing the zones that I'm choosing. So one, two, three, four, five. We'll mark these five for now. So we're looking for um, the tops of the candles. So I chose this line because it's sort of in between um, the top of the candle and the wick. Let me zoom in a little bit, there we go. So one option, um, if I look here, then this wick, I don't know if you can see it, literally touches the, the very tip top of that line. And here, the candle, the tops of the candles um, are landing on that line. So this is a nice kind of zone area. If we look at this second line here, let me choose the up arrow. Notice that the bottoms of the candles are resting on the line. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be exact, but over here, we're almost at the point where the tops um, of these smaller candles are resting on that top line. So when we look at this third zone here, the bottoms of these candles are sitting on this zone. That's what we want to see. Look, notice these, this wick here. Uh, these candles are just sitting on that zone. The tops of these candles are reaching up to the zone. So that's the area that we're looking for. And then for this one, I chose this one because the tops of these candles are near this line as well as these. Now, we've kept it, we've just used the, the line tool the last few weeks. Some would prefer to use a triangle, I'm sorry, a rectangle. So under geometric shapes, if I choose a rectangle,
this would allow me to truly mark a zone instead of one simple line. And this is a favorite of some, and I'm just going to right click and choose a color that you can see a little better. So I'm gonna make that background maybe a light blue and I'm gonna make it a little darker, not too dark because I wanna be able to see the candles through it. Okay, now by using this rectangle tool, then I can actually cover the area that includes the top of the candle and some of the wick. So this is a favorite tool for some people when you wanna mark an area of importance and not just one simple line. But you know, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, another cool part about the rectangle is if you go to settings, once I select it, come on, Trading View. There we go. If I right click and click on settings, nope, that's not it. Let me try another one. So if I were to mark this line here with a rectangle, That's the horizontal line. Let's select, I think that's it. Nope. See if I can move it. There we go. Right click. All right, Trading View, reset chart. When it, things get a little kooky on Trading View, I like to do that. So let's see, I have my crosshair selected. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to show you, but normally you can select that. You can right click on settings and it extend it. And so that way it'll be um, extended far to the right and far to the left. I'll show you how to do that uh, next time. So are there any other questions about how to select your zones? You can use the horizontal line or the rectangle tool, and you just want to try to pick um, where the candles are reaching to, so the tops of the candles, as well as where they are sitting. So you want your lines, which are the same thing as your zones or your support and resistance, to capture where the candles are reaching to and where the candles are um, starting from. So like the bottoms of them and the tops. So once you have those selected, and you're uh, moving into the area where you want to call your own trades or even take them you know, in your live or demo account, it's a good idea to trade from one line to the next. We call that zone to zone trading. So that gives you a great goal for your TP. So let's say, let's use the arrow. Let's say we're looking at this area here and we notice that price is breaking through this zone it comes back and touches the zone again, we call that a retest. So here could be our entry. So for our entry, we're going to use a horizontal line. We'll place that uh, maybe here. And for that horizontal line, let's see if TradingView will let me, we're gonna mark that blue and we're gonna use a dashed line. So there's our entry. Our target is going to be the next zone. I'm gonna place it just a little bit underneath so you'll be able to see it. So we'll right click and mark that in green. And what are we missing? We gotta have a stop loss. We don't want to trade without a stop loss because we're not, we're not gambling. We're using technical analysis. So for your stop loss, what I love about trading zone to zone is that, let's move this down. And you can be flexible here. Obviously you want your stop loss to be on the other side of the zone. 
let's see, we want to mark that uh, stop loss with a red line. Okay, so the goal is to put the stop loss on the other side. So from our entry to our stop loss, that's called our risk. And from the entry to your take profit, that's called your reward. So this would represent a good risk to reward because we're risking a little bit and we're going for a lot <laughs> to, keep it, to keep it simple. You want your risk to be as small as possible and you want your reward to be um, larger than your risk. So in this case, let me get rid of that arrow. If we take our entry here, we could move that stop loss um, We could go here. We want it below the, the recent candles. So if price were to fall all the way here, we could logically assume that our buy is not going to happen. So the reason that we have our stop loss is to literally stop our loss from becoming bigger. Okay. So if we entered here, there's our stop loss. We would be in this trade. Remember, each candle is one hour. So this trade would take uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, almost 10 hours. But look, we hit our TP. So this is an example of like what we call break and retest. Price broke through the zone, came back and touched it. You want to wait for that retest. And then it proceeded to go to our take profit. Price does not always give you a retest. If you're a cautious trader, then you will just um, pass up on that opportunity and wait till you see a retest. If you don't see it um, on the hour, feel free to drop down to the five minute, the 15 minute. Typically, that's where you'll see a lot of the retests happening. So that's a good idea to, to have you drop down to a lower time frame. Now, let's take a look before I, uh, we go into our questions at AJ. Let's see what's going on with AJ. So I'm going to right click reset chart. So who can tell me either place it in the chat or come off mute. Are we looking for buys or sells with AJ? If this is one of the um, pairs that we're trading. Buys or sells? Buys. Yeah. Absolutely. Why? Because right now, current price, this is current price, is above the 50 EMA. We're also um, above the 200. So now look at the difference. When we were on EJ, and let me just go back there. Remember how price kind of like to, to rest and sit on the 200? We're not seeing that so much with AJ. Price kind of likes to dip below it. So every pair is going to be different. It doesn't um, respect the 200 is a way to say it as much as EJ does. So we have a lot of consolidation in this area, but take a look at this trade. Once price broke, um, let me use the arrow. Once price broke through the 50, it sold that's a nice sell to be in all the way down. But again, Coach Max has taught us, you know, there's nothing wrong with taking 20 pips and dipping. So we can quickly um, mark up some supply, some support and resistance lines. There's one there. Let's see. North Georgia, 138 East. There we go. So we'll go back to our solid line and we'll make that zone maybe a dark gray. And then what I like to do is just control Z, control V. And maybe we can mark this area. Um, maybe that area.
um, maybe the tops there, and then let's put some near the bottom. Let's move this one um, here. Notice on this line, the bottoms of these candles are here and the tops of these candles are here. That definitely makes this a very important um, level because this zone is support for these candles, but it's resistance for these candles. And so when we mean support, think of support as the floor. So we can write that down. So support equals the floor. And think about that's what you stand on. So that's where these candles um, are standing on this support line. But for resistance, think of resistance as the ceiling. So resistance represents um, where price can't seem to break through. So here, the, the bodies of these candles um, are using this zone for uh, resistance. And then we could do possibly one more down here. And again, um, these candles are using this zone for resistance. They don't seem to wanna break through it. But here, this candle was using this zone as support. It's sort of standing on it. So this is an example of how we can mark up AJ. We know that generally we're going to look for buys. Um, I have found that, you know, everyone teaches you that the trend is your friend and, <laughs> and it really is. So it's less safe, definitely doable, but it's less safe to go for sales, you know? You can trade it. We're, we're looking at it. We're, we're seeing that the trades are there. Um, I'm more comfortable just kind of trading with the trend and going for the buys. Those are temp typically the bigger moves as well. So if you notice here, when price broke through this zone, it went straight there. We didn't get a pullback. Now we can go to a lower time frame to see if we got one, but you won't always get that break and retest. Sometimes price is just on a mission and it's not looking back. But for um, for most times, here's an example here, and let me kind of zoom in. So here's an example where price, since we're in a in an uptrend and above the fifty, price broke through immediately came back and touched that zone again, went kind of low. This one may have hit uh, stop loss. Um, we could re-enter and go zone to zone to our next TP. The good news about setting your stop loss on the other side of the zone is it's okay to fail fast. It's good to fail fast because if price eventually um, does what you thought, you can re-enter and get those pips back. So for this one, and then um, I'll open it up. You guys can come off mute. If we entered here, you know, we may have had our stop loss on the other side. And if we, if we use the previous candle, we probably just would have made it. So that one will mark with our red. And then our TP is here at the next zone and we'll mark that one in green. So, you know, there's nothing wrong with baby steps. Get comfortable looking at the chart and just imagining taking the trades and plot. Where would you enter? Where would you put your stop loss? And where would you put your TP? Eventually, go ahead and take that trade and demo and just watch it. And as you get more comfortable and you get more wins under your belt, then you'll be ready for uh, your live account and you can take trades with confidence. But what's really important um, is your stop loss. I think when I was back on EJ, 
and I was on the one minute. I think I saw a huge, yeah. <laughs> so this wick, you guys, is why we like to have a stop loss. There have been times in the past, and I'm definitely guilty, where I am live trading and I put in my trade and, you know, I wouldn't have my TP or my stop loss set. So imagine um, that I'm in a trade and this, <laughs> the bottom falls out. Sometimes you can't press on MT4 or close quick enough. <laughs> so price will do this, you know, every now and then just be sure you always have a stop loss set. What questions do you all have? Has anyone traded before without that stop loss and had that happen to them? Or are you guys very safe and cautious traders? We won't tell. <laughs> yeah, but um, pick a couple, you know, uh, cautious not. <laughs> I hear you, Glenda. I have been um, bitten. I'll tell you um, this funny story. When I first started my trading journey and the company, um, a lot of us came from that company years and years ago. For some reason, I thought I could trade an exotic. It was USDZAR, USD ZAR. And I was doing just what I said, trading my live account and my thought was, I'm going to watch it so I don't have to set my stop loss. And then USD Zara being an, ex an exotic pair, definitely not beginner friendly. I had no business trading it. The bottom fell out. $200 gone, just like that. And I was a brand new trader. All right, Miss Daisy, safe and cautious. I like it. I like it. That's the way to be. <laughs> yes, Zenda, uh, Glenda, I learned that lesson um, the hard way. Set your stop loss. This is a nice um, um, uptrend um, here. Oh, and um, before we go, hopefully everyone is plugging into Impact Over Profits uh, International. Next time we'll go over the website. Uh, Damo has um, several videos posted and they are absolute fire. He really breaks down order blocks and um, he does a really, really good job. I was really impressed um, with the videos. They were super, super clear. So uh, definitely check out the videos on the Impact Over Profits International site. And um, yeah, we'll take some time and, and go through that next week. Does anyone else have any uh, questions or comments before we go? I have a question. Sure. Okay. Now, when you have you ever got so if you look at a chart and you just feel like, what am I doing? Yes. So yeah. how do you kind yeah. of regroup yourself? You look at you like, what is going on? What am I doing here? How about this? Let's let's mark some steps. When you open up the charts. I recommend um, step one, go um, to the one hour time frame. The one hour is kind of a warm and fuzzy time frame. It's not too big like the four hour in the daily, and it's not too small like the five and the 15 minute. So it's kind of just right. So go to your one hour um, TF time frame. Make sure you um, add your 50 EMA and ask yourself, is price above or below the 50? So these are basic steps that you can do with any chart. So let's for um, AJ, we're on the one hour time. Well, actually, let's go back to the one hour time frame. We, add, we have our 50 EMA added. And is price above or below? At this point, current price is above. So at least 
you know if you're looking for buys or sells. Now, if price is kind of going sideways and is like in this area here, where it's smack dab in the middle of the 50 EMA, then maybe we don't trade that pair. Maybe we don't even look at it because we make the most money when price is trending. By trending, we mean it's in an uptrend, it's in a clear downtrend. So if you can't look at the chart and get a clear direction, then just maybe you go to something else. I think I have uh, UJ on here. So who was that who asked the question? That was me, Glenda. Hey, Glenda. All right, Glenda, walk me through UJ. What's happening with our three steps, if you remember the steps? Okay. Well, you said go to the one hour time frame. Uh huh. We're here. Then you have your 50 and your 200 EMA. Mm hmm. And which, where is price? Above or below? Is it buying or selling? Mm hmm. So, what do you think is going on here with UJ? Hey, okay, UJ, right now it is. Above the 200, well above the 200, mm -hmm. but it's in the 50. Exactly. So you need to see if it closes above or below the 50 before you do anything definite. Perfect. So up till now, clear uptrend. So we had lots of buying opportunities up until this point, but now you're exactly right. We have to wait. We have to wait. So if this was one of the pairs that I was trading, I wouldn't be looking for any immediate trades because we're on the one hour time frame. So we could drop down to the 15 minute. And all right, Glenda, walk me through the 15 minute. What do you see? Okay, on the 15 minute, <clears throat> I see prices below the 200. Well, actually, it's kind of the 200 and the 50 are kissing each other. Mm -hmm. Price is going just above both of them. Mm -hmm. So. I'm not sure. I guess I go with the trend of the 50 or just wait to see what happens. Yep. Because we're... if it's above the 50, you would buy it. If it's below the 50, you sell it. But right now it's at both of them, both of them yep. together. So they haven't crossed. Right. Absolutely. So again, even if we were trading on the smaller time frames, I love the smaller time frames. I do. So clear buying opportunity. Let me um, use my arrow clear buying opportunity here. Now, once price broke through the 50, we did have a nice sell opportunity down to the 200. So take notes, UJ respects the 200, almost to the wick. Right there, price is sitting on the 200, okay? Um, but where it is now, yeah, it's kind of like in a in a no trade zone. But uh, here's something that I can leave you guys with. We can draw a trend line. I love trend lines. Look at that. When I first discovered trend lines, it made me really, really excited because I understood that price has a method to how it how it um, how it behaves. I'm not sure where I would place that. Maybe there. So look, y'all. Price touched the trend line here, sold to the bottom. But it didn't stop there because it wanted to go to the, the 200 EMA. Now, when it took off again, it stopped at that uh, top trend line, eventually fell back down to it and rode it back. This is called a channel price, and we've covered this um, in previous classes, price is moving in a channel. Channels are so fun to trade because you can take sales from the top and you can take buys from the bottom of the trend line. And when it touches that trend line, you can take another sell. Yes. Glenda, I love parallel channels as well. And when it gets close there, uh huh, you can take it up. Yes. I was just going to ask is that regardless of if it's above the 50 or not? Uh, yeah, it's kind of a, a different view of the chart. Because if we look at it, 
if we look at it here, eventually, you know, there are a couple of pips where it's above the 50, but for the most part of that move, that sell does take place under the 50. Now, more than likely, you may have had um, a zone here, maybe there. So this is probably a break and retest of that zone. So if you weren't comfortable taking the sell at this point because price was under the 50, you could just wait till it does the hits that zone and it's showing you a break and retest and you could enter there. And so for this buy, you know, that's a little tricky because price is still um, under the, the EMA. So yeah, it's definitely a, a a different perspective. It's definitely a different perspective. And price doesn't um, always fall in a parallel channel. So that's kind of like a, it's a treat when it does happen. Any other uh, questions or concerns? So I'm going to take away uh, that parallel channel just so we can leave it um, on a clean note. But I would say, you know, I'm expecting um, price to sell here based um, on our trend line. So we would have confluence because pretty soon it would be under the 50 um, and the 200. But we could um, either go on a smaller time frame or just kind of wait it out just to make sure that we get a clear rejection here before entering. Maybe wait until price closes um, under the 50 and take it down to the bottom channel. All right, you all, anything else um, before we go? Well, if not, I will get this recording um, ready for the YouTube channel. And yeah, you're very welcome, Glenda. Uh, take your favorite charts, mark them up. Glenda, you did um, an amazing job um, last week with several of, um, of your charts. I was happy to see those. Um, plop them in um, IOP study groups. We'll, we'll take a look and let's, let's see some charts. All right, you guys, good night and happy trading. All right, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.